Hi everyone. Um, so God did a thing. <laughs> um, the reason I am back is because of the way that God moved so instantaneously, he wanted me to come on and share the testimony. So as you know, earlier today, I left the condo and I was resigning myself to sleeping one more night in my car. God had me stay at a park that has a lot of green trees and a lot of green grass and there's a big lake in that park. I like being outdoors and I was spending some time outside because he had put it on in me every time I go to that park that I should spend time outside. And up until today, I I didn't have the energy or the uh, it, it's I was not in a place where I could do that and God knew that but he kept putting it in my heart every time I went to that park and every time he led me to go to another park he would do the same thing and as I was leaving the condo I told my pup you know hey we're going to go out and we're going to have to stay in the car, in the truck. I don't know for how long. Um, you know, as of right now, it's until I get paid. And because of the holiday, I don't get paid until the 6th. And my pup understands. And he whines the first day. And after that, he, he's okay. But the first day is always the toughest. And I stayed at that first park until about 2.30. And then God said, go get gas. I'm like, okay. And I asked him, you know, which way do you want me to go? So he told me, go this way. And I did. And I was driving down. And the gas station that I was looking for had gas at 4.49. And being on a limited budget, 449 is a lot of money for a gallon of gas. So the store next door had gas at 435, 434. So I went there. But first he had me buy a soda at the first gas station because they have their sodas cheaper. So and so I bought a soda and then I went to the other gas station and I filled up. Which I knew $25 was only going to get me a quarter of a tank and um, so then he said okay now head to where you came where where you were just at at the park that's there and I said okay so I drove down now mind you where I was at and where this part the park I was going to it's about 15 miles away so that took half the quarter of a tank to get there <laughs> and then <laughs> I get there and he has me sit for a little while and has me listen to a word and then suddenly he says you know what go to the other park the park that Apollo likes I'm like, okay so that's another chunk of miles away in traffic. But I was obedient and I did as God asked. I just pulled out and drove. When I got to that park, um, I had to take my dog to go to the bathroom, you know, because he'd been in the car for quite a while at that point. And because it got, from the time I left the first park to the time I got to the second park, he said, no, don't let him out yet. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and because he was gonna have me leave and he waited until a certain time and then he said, okay, go. It was about four o'clock. And so I did, I, I left and I went to the, to the park that my dog likes. And I got there and I took him out, took him to the bathroom and God said, you know what? Don't go, don't go back in the car. Go get your phone. Go get, um, 
Well, let me, ref let me, so I was on the freeway and all of a sudden, um, God said, check Facebook. I was like, okay. So I checked Facebook and a particular person posted a video and God said, don't close it, hold on to it um, and just drive to the park. I'm like, okay. So I get to the park and he says, look at the picture again or look at the video and listen to it. And it was a video of his son. And I did, I listened to the video, I'm like, okay. And then, um, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, you know, getting, getting my thought process together as to how long I'm going to be there. So, okay, usually I'm here till nine. Then I go to this other park, back to the park that I just left. And I usually stay there till 1030 or 11 o'clock. And then I go to the Walmart parking lot where I go to sleep. <laughs> and so I was preparing my mind for that, for that travel, for that. And then I was thinking, okay, where am I going to eat? When am I going to, you know? And I thought, oh, okay, well, there's a Wendy's across the street. I can, you know, stop in, get my food, and then head, because I'm going east, so it's on that side of the street, so I can just turn into the right and go. And as I'm sitting there, um, and of course, after I take my dog out to the bathroom, God's like, don't go back in the car. It's too hot. Go sit out over there on the picnic table. I'm like, okay. So I went and I grabbed my phone. I grabbed my um, soda. And I grabbed some bags for the poop in case he pooped again. And um, of course he did, so I cleaned it up and <laughs> threw it away. Not that you needed to know that, but. <laughs> so I'm sitting there looking, listening to this video and suddenly God says, send him a message. I'm like, what? Normally, I would ask him to confirm, but I've been going on faith, you know, especially after this morning and the way that my flesh just reacted and, and tried to make everything so negative. Well, before I responded, I had received a message from the condo I just left. And they were asking me if I had had a dog staying with me in the condo. And I was like, what are you talking about? I told you I had a dog when I first start, when I first reserved the, the, part, the condo and you charged me $75 on top of, you know, whatever the fee was, whatever the cost was of the condo. Um, Cause that's what they do. They charge you a $75 cleaning fee on top of the, your stay. And God said, don't answer. And I said, okay. And so this is happening all simultaneously. I get the condo email or message. Then I see the post that this person did. And then God has me sit down and respond to this gentleman. And not Two seconds after I hit send, Miss Tara sends me a gift. <laughs> I was like, what? What? And so I work tomorrow. And I was thinking, okay, well, I'll save the, the money that she sent me and I'll use it tomorrow so that my puppy doesn't have to be in the car, in the heat, while I'm working. And God said, um, what's the scripture? I'm like, what do you mean, what's the scripture? And he says, what's the scripture? I don't understand. He goes, there's a scripture that, that, that talks about this. Don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will take care of itself. I've already provided for you today. So worry about today? That's right. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. So why are you worrying about tomorrow? Oh, okay. So I reserved a hotel for today. <laughs> uh, 
I had no idea that my obedience in this way would lead to God putting in Tara's heart to give me a gift that would be enough to cover one night hotel stay. What happens tomorrow? I don't know. It's in God's hands. He took care of me today. I have faith. Faith without obedience is wasted. Obedience is better than sacrifice. But if you do all three, the bounty of the kingdom is yours. And so I was going to make the video right when I got here, but God's like, no, I want you to eat because he had me stop to get some food. So I got, I stopped to get some, because I was like, well, you know, if I, if I use that money and what little bit is left over, I might be able to find another hotel that I can stay at that, that I can use that money for. And he goes, no, that's not what I want you to use it for. I want you to go get some food. I want you to eat. I was like, okay, then why did you have me throw away the chicken? <laughs> and he says, because I want you to be obedient the first time. I don't want you to have to ask me consistently over and over to confirm. I want you to trust that I'm going to come through when you ask me for help. And you've asked me for help. And... When God comes through, and this goes with, first the blessings will start slow, and then they pick up speed, and then you're going to have so much flooding of blessings that you're not going to know what to do with them, that you're going to say, please stop blessing me because it's too much. And, you know, it's one of those things where we are so in our minds and we are so in our, what's physically in front of us that we forget that in the spirit, life is completely different. Life is not like it is in, in the earth. And we have a father who can do whatever he wants. He can make wonders out of nothing. You know, the temperature today got to 111 degrees. That's what it was when I was checking into the hotel. Into the motel. Because it's not a real hotel, it's a motel. Motel 6. Why do I come stay at Motel 6? Because even poor people need to have a good place that is blessed by God. You know, these are the people that they will stand on the street corners begging for money so that they can come rent a hotel room where they won't be judged by the staff or they won't be shunned because they don't have the typical job or the typical lifestyle that society requires you to have but they do what they can to get by. And it reminds me of the scripture that God says that when you do the things for the lowest of his children, you do those things for him. And if you're being given opportunities to support brothers and sisters and you're looking the other way, what are you going to say to God when he tells you, you never helped me when I was thirsty. You never fed me when I was hungry. You never clothed me when I was cold. Remember, those parables aren't just words that he threw together. They have meaning behind them. And when you sit with God and you, and you actually try to understand what it is He's telling you, 
you begin to see a bigger picture and you begin to see people in a different light. This walk is not easy for any of us. The perils that we have to face, the tribulations, the, the war, the, the sabotage. And I can, and, and it was right there. If I had responded to that message from the condo regarding a dog smell that they, the, the new guests had, and I had in, gone down that rabbit hole and argued with them about, you know, I did tell you guys, and then they come back and say, no, you didn't, and they now want to charge me the money that for, for the dog, and now they're going to penalize me because I had a dog. That was a distraction. That was a distraction. If I had followed that, I would have missed being obedient to Father and responding regarding something that in the future could have been the difference. You know, a lot of the prophetic words that are being spoken right now are talking about having crazy faith and having um, undeniable obedience. You have to be listening very carefully to what it is that God is saying because in those instructions will come the revelations and the fulfillment of your prayers. Now when I was on my way to the park, the, the, the second park where I only stayed a few minutes these are the words that I saw train caravan and the other word was um, something about um, transit just Emily was talking about some of the some of some of God's daughters missing the train or missing their connection because of their inability to discern what God was telling them. Had I not been diligent in listening to what God was telling me in that moment, I could have potentially missed being obedient and being provided for. And it would have been the difference of being in my car tonight or being in an air conditioned room tonight. So Tara, thank you so much. Thank you so much and may God bless you and make your donation to me, your gift to me, a hundredfold return to you. You have been the first and the only sower into me. The money that I receive from tips, God has, there is a specific level of service I have to perform at in order to receive those funds. So those funds aren't, I don't get them for free. I don't get them just because, oh, yeah, you know, Diane is a nice person, so we're going to give her some money. No, I have to work for them. Just like that, I have to provide testimony, and I have to provide instructions, and I have to provide a path that people can follow. And because of that, God opens doors. He opens windows, and He opens gates that were closed to me before. I mean, this sister came out of nowhere. And God's like, follow her. And I'm like, okay. And the more I see the, the videos that she posts, and the more he brings them to me. He says, I need you to watch this one. And I'm like, okay. Right now, I'm trying to decipher what it is God is trying to tell me. Earlier today, I made a comment about 41 and 42. Five, six, four, five, six. He's been showing me these numbers. Four, five, six, for the last 
mm, probably two, maybe three weeks. And I don't understand what he's talking about. Is it a timeline? Is it a date? Is it an address? Is it, I, I don't know. But I am paying attention because suddenly he will reveal what those numbers mean. And I can give you another example. A sister, a bull for Christ, um, back last year, sometime, no, yeah, last year, let's see, I moved in June, no, the year before that, in like November, December, gave a word where she was talking about how God showed her that E, uh, showed her the, the 7-Eleven logo. And in that 7-Eleven logo, he said, what do you see? And she goes, I don't know, uh, 11? And he goes, no, in the middle of the word is Eve. And then God said, Eve is in 7-Eleven. And guess where I worked? I worked at 7-Eleven. That was the door I was waiting for God to open while I was stuck, stranded in my truck without a battery that worked, with no money, no cell phone service. That was the door that I was waiting for him to open. And I didn't know until he says, look up. And I look up and there is a form asking for people that they were hiring. And lo and behold, the third shift was what they were hiring for. And that's what God wanted me to work. Because the night shift was where he wanted me to pray. The night shift was where he wanted me to do his work. He wanted me to bring his word and his ways into that store. And that store turned around. Not by my might, not by my strength, but by God's. I spoke to many people, many men who in the beginning shunned me. They're like, mm, yeah, whatever. And over time, because God kept telling me, try it again and I try it again and they shut me still and, and finally it was something that he that the individual said that I caught I was like oh you believe in God too and he goes oh you do too I'm like heck yeah and that was the way that I was able to contact connect with him and provide him the guidance that God was telling me. And because he told me, he's going to be your witness. He's going to be the witness that will confirm that you are who I say you are. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and he's done that to me with many different people that I meet along the way. So when he says, I want you to do this, listen and do it. Because you never know what could be on the other side of your obedience. Maybe it was that car you've always been asking for. Right now, my car, my truck is running by the grace of God. And I know I don't have to worry because I have faith that God will keep it running. As long as he needs me to keep moving from a point A to point B and I keep being obedient, he will make sure that that truck continues running. Crazy faith. The kind of faith that people look at you and they're like, God would never have you do that. Oh, yes, he would. Oh, yes, he would. Because he's looking for the people with the crazy faith, for the people that are willing to walk the walk that no one else will do. Because those are his remnant. Those are the chosen ones that he is looking for that will convert the remaining flock because they have walked a walk that no one could have put, nobody could have said that's the way that God wants us to walk. And because we have walked it, we are his proof, we are his confirmation of what can happen when you follow God with crazy faith and against the naysayers. Yeah, it's, it's, it sucks for a season or two or three or four or five, but what you gain in, in the long run, I mean, 
yes, I'm staying in my car. Yes, if you if I took pictures of my of the interior of my truck, you'd be like, how in the heck is she living in that? Yes, it it my truck looks like I'm living in it. My dog looks like I'm living on the streets. He's sick. He's he. But God said he will be healed. Do you have faith in me? Yes. Then don't listen to anyone else. Okay. Do you have faith in me that I will bring you out of this? Yes. Then don't listen to anyone else. In fact, don't tell anyone else the path that I'm taking you on. Only testimony is what you're going to give. He never has me tell anyone before he has me walk the walk until after he's done what he's going to do through me then he has me testimony because at that point the lucifer can't do anything about it you know three days after i moved into the condo i had made a steak and i had cut a piece of steak off to chew on it and to taste it kind of see you know if it was going to be any good and literally i i put it in my mouth and it went down my throat. I didn't even have a chance to chew it. It just bypassed everything and it stuck right in my throat and I couldn't breathe. I'm alone in the condo. I don't know any of my neighbors. I tried to drink some soda to try and get it down and the soda came back out which told me it was a it was lodged. And if I didn't get it out quickly enough I was going to suffocate and die and no one was going to know until they found me at the end of my stay because nobody knows where I'm at. Nobody knows where, the, where, where I'm going at work. Everybody thinks I live in one place when in actuality I, live, I don't live anywhere. I live on the streets. And I, I can't explain it. All I can say is it just felt like somebody pulled it out of my mouth. And I coughed it out and I, I, I looked at it and I was like, that piece isn't big enough to choke me. And, you know, I held on to it this time and I chewed pieces of the, of the steak off because I wasn't going to let Lucifer scare me. I wasn't going to let Lucifer put me in 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 a in a bind of not moving or doing what God wants me to do because he he wanted to put fear in me God actually let me go out one night to a lounge because he said that I had been spending too much time in in the condo and and I did, I was I, I mean I I was you know sleeping and I was resting I was watching TV not really, but, you know, because I was mostly more look, looking at um, videos on my phone or I would listen to music or I would listen. I, it was always something other than just watching TV. The TV was more for background noise. Even right now, the, I've got the TV on, but I've got it on mute. Um, I'm, since I've been on this walk, I, I don't tend to look at the TV like I used to. It's It's not... It doesn't grab my attention like it used to. And so I just want to say thank you very much, Tara. And I pray God blesses you. And I'm just, I'm amazed. Because I was just resigning myself to sleep in my truck. And, and here I am. <laughs> I had no idea that this was going to be the day. I can't wait for tomorrow. See what God does for me. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> in the name of my Lord Jesus, I pray that you seek him in this hour. Amen.